Welcome to the nail engineer. So you might recognize this nail. This is um, a pink variation on my um, opal nail. You might have seen the tutorial for that. Um, I'm going to be using exactly the same technique as in my opal tutorial video. So I'll be kind of whizzing through that. Um, as you'll know from that video, all I do is I pop on a, a base and don't cure it, sprinkle this on and then encapsulate. And this is Arctic Wolf, also by Glitterati. And because I'm going to be encapsulating this, and I'll be using gel pot clear, um, I'm going to be then refining and filing, which is why I'm doing this nail first, because I don't want to do like all the other nails and I get dust everywhere and all this kind of stuff. So that's my tip top tip. Always do your messy stuff first. So let's get cracking. So first up, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop a thin layer of 073 all over the nail just to kind of provide a bit of a base so now I've got my layer on all I'm gonna do is just get my uh, cuticle pusher and scoop up a bit all I'm gonna be doing is sprinkling this all over the nail and then tapping off any excess and you don't need a whole load of this, she says, as she dumps a whole load of it on her nail. Um, you just need enough to get those lovely kind of flakes showing through. And all you're going to do is, with an orange stick, it's the easiest way. You're just going to make sure that you haven't got any bits kind of jagged edges sticking out just discard any excess and you're just gonna make sure that you've got a decent gap around the side walls and that any pieces just at the edges are kind of tucked in and all you want to do is just make sure that you've got an even coverage just spreading out you'll see that it's kind of thicker in one area and thinner in another area just spread in those bits out so you've got like a uniform covering and then you're gonna look down the barrel of the nail and just gently pat down bits that are sticking up. You just want to try and keep this as close to the nail as possible just to kind of reduce the bulk when you've encapsulated. Once you've done all of that, you're gonna cure it for 60 seconds. So I got all the glitter pushed down on the nail and as flat as I can get it. And now we're going to be encapsulating with gel pot clear and you can see it's quite thick and viscous and you just to be careful when going into this not to introduce any bubbles in there because it is so thick I will say that it's behaving a lot better in warmer weather um, because there's a bit more kind of like flow to it when it's warmer um, in the winter time, you'll be wanting to warm this up, perhaps on a, um, a radiator or just, you know, in a warm place. And my camera is really, really, really struggling with these glitters to focus in. I'm really sorry about this. Um, normally, you wouldn't really want to do that. You wouldn't want to abandon your blob on the nail because then there's another rare uh, chance that you're going to get bubbles in there but in any case it's just the usual rigmarole for when you're encapsulating you start with your blob kind of towards the cuticle slash zone two now with this you don't want to do it all in one um although they said that it has like less of a heat spike than other builders um i have actually found that it's it's got quite a spike on it um, and especially if you're not using this with like a builder base you really like want to go thinner <laughs> see what I mean about it being runnier in uh, warmer weather so anyway um, let's hope that my camera doesn't keep going out of focus like that um, you've got to work fairly quickly and you just want to make sure that you get all around the edges 
And can you see how it's kind of started to level out now? And you just basically want to make sure that that whole surface is covered. Now I can see that there's a little area where I'm missing a bit of coverage. And like I say, you're gonna build this in a couple of layers. So at this stage, it doesn't really have to be perfect. All you want to do is make sure that you've got most of your glitter kind of like anchored in. And what you really want to do as well is make sure you go around the sides and that there's no kind of like little voids in there and that there's no product on the skin either have a swipe around with an orange wood stick before you pop in so after curing you can see this is what we've got and it has run a little bit because it's extremely warm this evening um, and you can see that it's a bit of a, a lumpy mess but don't worry like I say that's just like a, a base layer and then you're gonna go in with a, a second layer and just really make sure that you've got full and smooth coverage this time and don't worry too much about it um, the only thing that you're saving by being super neat at this stage is product and your time um, if you struggle to control your gel don't worry it will all come right when you file it this is not a movement that I would normally make it's just because I'm used to kind of like putting on the gel in one I'm just wanting to really scrub down and make sure that any of those like little voids in there are filled because we don't want air bubbles we don't want voids we don't want a breakdown in the manicure kind of further down the road so I'm pretty sure I have got a full coverage there now I'm just gonna have a little last kind of look around the nail just to make sure that I've got that apex forming nicely that I've got no bubbles and that everything is covered and then I'm gonna hang upside down just to let gravity kind of help that apex along well as luck would have it um, my phone decided that it was really really low on battery so um I had to find my charger now I'm in a little bit of a mess but let's leave it like that and I'll show you how easy it is to file back into submission so after curing this is what we've got a hot mess literally because that heat spike so I'm just gonna wipe off my tacky layer and I've had a lot of requests um, to show how you file an encapsulation how you file and refine it um, a lot of my uh, nail bodies and stuff have been complaining of getting kind of like kind of flat blobbiness and if anything is the epitome of flat blobbiness it's it's this right here um, but it is real easy so this could get boring I always start at the cuticle area and just bring that down and you can see already it's starting to come down and this is not a particularly sharp file this is actually quite blunt and well seasoned um, I could use a, a sharper one um, but I do tend to find when I'm working on myself um, I just find it a bit easier um, especially when filming to not have a fresh sharp one otherwise I end up cutting myself because I've only got half an eye on what I'm doing and then half an eye on whether my pesky bloody camera is focusing in or not so then I just do exactly the same on the other side and you'll be able to see on this side that I'm just bringing that kind of cuticle area in flush and then going up the side walls for the same reason now you it's a judgment call it depends how high your glitter was poking up you'll develop a sense of when you're getting close to the glitter um, with these mylar flakes it's not so bad if you do accidentally kind of poke through because we're going to be putting stuff over this anyway um, and with these mylar flakes they're not so bad not like glitter which is all like generally silver with some other pigment over the top of it and then 
you file it down and you end up with these little dull silver patches. Yes, we've all done it. So to get the angle right, I'm going to have to do that side off screen. So let's just pause there. I'll sort the other side out and then I'll show you the next stages. Right, that's better. And by get the angle right, I meant to be able to kind of turn my finger away from myself which I currently can't do because I can't kind of like bring it into myself and kind of support it oh actually yeah let's get my boobs close to the camera yeah that kind of works so that's how I do with the other side if any of you are wondering so you can see there that we have brought in the side walls and we've brought that cuticle down and we're still a little bit kind of like humpy lumpy in this area and this is the stage where you go up and over and Let's switch back to uh, my uh, trusty one. So up and over is kind of just blending the beginnings of that apex into the side walls, yeah? And then your final stage, and I think we'll go back to this one, is beveling out your end. Now this can take some time if you've got quite a layer on there um because what you want to do is kind of get a nice curve going on and then a nice slim tip as slim as you can get it without risking breaking through to glitter so that's all i'm doing is kind of like blending down and sometimes for this stage i like to switch to my um job bottle link sponge buffer um these are really, really, really good for getting a nice kind of crisp edge without taking quite as much off as a file. Even though they're supposed to be the same grit, but to me they just feel a bit softer. And so all I'm doing is I'm just in slow motion, just coming down in that direction. Obviously you'll need to uh, change this depending on your free edge shape. So wherever there's an edge on your nail, you want to kind of smooth down, like in a kind of flicking curve motion. And believe it or not, the higher you leave the apex, the slimmer it will make your edge appear. I'm doing a good job of stabbing myself here with the file. But you can see there, that's really, really taken shape now. Um, probably that edge is about as crispy as I'm going to get it without breaking through the glitter. And what I always do at this stage is just sharpen up that free edge again. And this is the bit that makes everyone wince when you do it. But it's really the only way I find to get a nice kind of crispy edge. So that's about it really. Um, I can see that I've still got a little bit of a hump just there, but really these sponge buffers make light work of that, just to kind of blend it out. And all I would say is you just need to look around the nail, like from all angles, especially like down the barrel, to just double check before you complete this stage, double check for any kind of lumps, bumps or whatever. Um, I think that's about right though. I remember to always go down your grits. So now I'm going on the nice smooth side just for that kind of like final buff out before we move on to the next stage. And you can see there that that's already looking very very like an opal but i just want to tone it down a little bit more and give it that kind of like milky look um so let me get cleaned up and we'll come back and do that so after curing um i just basically top coated and this is what we're left with um and you can see that it's just a really really nice kind of soft peachy pink tone um, compared to the white one. The white one's very nice but I just want to try like a range of colours and um, if you're on Instagram um, follow me at the nail engineer I'm sure you'll be seeing a whole heap of different coloured opals in the future. 
So I hope you enjoyed this and found it useful. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.